All right, it's five o'clock, so I'll call this meeting to order. Will you all please stand with me and join me in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, then we'll move on to the roll call. Elder Felby? Present. Elder Flicky Paneski? Here. Elder Perella? Here. Uh, Chair Elder Mitchell's here, and Elder Person Ackley is excused. We will skip introductions and move on to approval of the minutes, item 2.1. Do we have any motions or discussions? All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it. Moving on to item 3.1, resolution number 41-21-22, uh, submitting for your information the 2022 budget schedule and 2022 preliminary budget fiscal factors for guidance prior to departmental budget preparation. Assuming we'll hand this off to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, as you can see in your board docs, uh, the IFC and the um, associated uh, documentation that's included with it, as well as the budget schedule. The budget schedule was uh, compressed a little bit uh, just because of some of the uh, changes that we've been making internally uh, on the actual estimated 2021-2022 budget. These are numbers that are basically estimated, they're unauthorized, or unaudited at this time. We're still waiting for uh, information to come in. But as the IFC basically reviews, um, we're basically starting our, our 2022 budget process and we'll be following a similar um, process that we've done for the last several years, if there's any questions. Any questions from committee members? I just have an observation. This came up really quickly. A budget year. It just comes. I know. I, I agree with you. I, I feel like I just did it. I, it feels like you just did one, too. I okay. Know. Just saying. I would be inclined to agree. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, can you just please um, explain in very few words what's the restraint program? The Wisconsin expenditure, expenditure. Oh, the restraint? restraint oh, boy. Caitlin, can you help me out with that? <laughs> you can come up to a podium. So the Wisconsin Expenditure Restraint Program actually has limits in place based on the size of your municipality and equalized value. It has some factors in there. And the requirement is that it stays within a certain percentage of growth each year. So your tax levy, all these things are included in that. And it's just uh, the state gives us a small, well, actually, it's about 700, I think, 60,000 for Sheboygan uh, grant if we stay within that program. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from committee members? One more. Go ahead. Um, which user fees will be uh, reviewed? Is are always the same on yearly basis, or there are specific that we address this year? Uh, on the fees? Yes. Um, last year, we actually did review uh, the majority of the fees that were are within within the city, uh, like in the clerk's department. A lot of the fees that they have are actually by state statute, so. We've been reviewing those on our, I mean, we reviewed them within the last year. So again, we continue to look at, are the fees necessary? Are the fees applicable? Are, you know, are they state statutory? And um, some of these fees hadn't been reviewed in, in many years. Okay, thank you. If there's no other comments, I believe we are looking for a motion to recommend approval. 
So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Seeing no further comments, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it. On to item 3.2, resolution, or Board of Officer number 42-21-22, uh, reporting that pursuant to resolution number 62-2021, authorizing the city administrator to negotiate settlement of certain claims made by the city of Sheboygan. Uh, city invoice number 6143 in the amount of $16,433.71 billed to Nathaniel J. Helm regarding damage to a traffic signal located at the West Median of 14th Street and Erie Avenue on July 4th, 2017 has been settled with payment to the city of Sheboygan in the amount of $15,028.71. Sounds like the title already told us what it is. Does anybody have any comments or questions? This one is just notification, correct? Mm -hmm. so, oh, there probably. Um, can you explain why a lot of these settlements go down? Um, we don't go for the, the total value that, that they owe you know, the 16,433, and um, we're going to okay it at 15,028. So can you explain why that goes down? I can, I can start and Chuck, if I misspeak, please jump in. Um, according to our um, ordinances, the city actually marks up uh, when a damage claim happens whether it's the labor or the materials, there's a certain percentage of markup. And then the insurance company will basically come back and want a significant reduction in that because they know that we mark it up. So then there's haggling that goes back and forth, basically saying, okay, we want 16,433 and they wanna pay less than 15, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So then we go back and forth and arm wrestle and then we we settled on this one at the 152871. 1571. Okay, thank you. Do, do we collect interest on these things? No, no, not that I'm aware of. So we try to close them as quickly as possible. Hmm. Part of, just to expand a little bit, uh, part of the issue is that the insurance companies um, are not willing to pay exactly the dollar that we, we are asking for. Um, as an example, they might, uh, a citizen might hit a signal light and it has to be replaced. It might have been a 20 year old signal light and they're basically saying, well, it depreciated over 20 years. Even though that signal light costs us today's prices, <laughs> they're basically saying, you know, they shouldn't have to pay for a new one. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? If not, I believe we're looking for a motion to recommend the council accepts and files. So moved. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it. 3.3, this one actually is a resolution. Number 33-21-22, a resolution authorizing the city administrator to approve Payment of bills and invoices related to the city's health insurance plan. Like this one as well? Sure. Um, thank you, Chair. This is really just to help speed up the process. Again, having separation of duties, making sure that we don't fall behind um, with making our payments accordingly. We, we need to allow the city administrator, myself, um, to be able to review them with the uh, HR director and basically make sure that the payments are made on time so we don't get any uh, fines or fees. And it will still end up coming to finance and personnel and council for final approval, but the payments have to be made in a timely manner and that's why we're asking for this. Uh, it's, it, it is something that is different than the approved 50,000 up to $50,000 for the city administrator. This is specific to just the health um, health care uh, payments that need to be made. Brad? Um, do, are the, do we have a sense of how much, 
how much we pay in these fees annually? Do, do we see that? Do we budget for that? I can speak to that, yes, so that we have already budgeted for um, these expenses. So for this particular invoice, just like the one we had last month, yeah. is for transplant fees and the stop loss fees, um, as well as, as administrative fees. So it's wrapped into our, our health care costs. Uh, we started this process in July because of the bringing these to you because they go over the threshold of the $50,000 and we didn't really have a practical process in place. What we anticipate for going forward in next year is that we'll be able to wrap this into um, the contract bundle, I guess, if that's the right way to say it, so that we don't need to bring these for your approval. You will approve the, the stop loss, which is about $750,000 a year in costs. And so you'll be able to say that, but we do pay that out monthly as there is an uh, increment, so. Perfect. One more time. One more time. Sorry about pressing it. Is that what's happening? Can you push the button? Thank you. Speaker. All right. Just to clarify, that, and that's what you're actually approving is not the bill anymore, but what you're approving today is that the bills don't have to come to you every month. So in essence, we've been in violation um, for years because any of these bills had to come to you for approval and they weren't coming to you for approval. Um, and then there, then you granted the administrator certain authority to pay things under a certain amount, but these are generally above that amount, at least certain months they are. And so, yeah, at the last meeting you approved a bill and now you won't have to approve them anymore because as they come in, this allows the administrator to make the payments. Okay, but what I'm understanding from what Vicki said is that we will have to approve the overall total payment in a budget package at the beginning of the year so we have a sense of how much we're paying. That's how I, that's how I understand the practice had, had should have been is that, you know, the stop loss, um, coverage costs about $750,000 a year. And so as you see the bills where it's about $50,000, and, and it fluctuates depending on the need, and we actually have hit our stop loss a, a few times this year. So, so that's what, um, in essence, yes, we're trying to get to something so that's a little less cumbersome so that you'll understand that we, we can give you detail and data on a monthly basis, but know that the overall cost is going to be about, we'll budget for about $750,000 again uh, for 2022, and you'll just know that those expenditures will come out, and so that will give Todd the ability to, or Administrator Wolf, to, the ability to pay those. And, and this committee will still see we paid the bill for yes. That's the intent. Yes. When yes. Todd said you'll still approve them, what he meant was you'll still see them because he has to report yes. on okay. them. Thank so the you. budget thing was already happening. That's required. The reason this is an issue is regardless of whether you budget it, whenever you pay bills, it's still supposed to come to you unless you've granted that authority. So the, there's the one side, which is the budgeted process, which you've already done, you've always approved that, okay. that there's a budget process. And it's now it's the paying the bill. You now aren't going to have to also pay the bill, every, approve paying the bill every single time that we get a bill. Um, okay. Todd will be able to take care of that. So should we go over budget in any given year? Do we? That'll still come to you. Do we you. see us? Yeah, we see anytime it. you go over budget, that requires a budget transfer, that requires it to come to you, requires two meetings. Perfect, thank yep. you. If I can just add a couple of comments, this, I think we talked about this briefly at an earlier time and uh, this final resolution now, it just makes a lot more sense than having everything come to us when that's probably going to mean every single one of our payments is late. Mm -hmm. It's a little more cumbersome than we want, so I've, I'm a big fan of the quarterly reporting. Yep. We still get to keep our oversight, but there's a process in place that actually works. And as the city, uh, city um, attorney had said, we've been making the payments, it just hasn't been brought forward. So we're trying to have the separation of duties, have the, the, um, the approval and the review of the process, and then it'll also be coming forward uh, where it hasn't been for, for many years. So now to make the payments on a timely manner will 
by do, approving this, you'll be providing the city administrator the, the power, as, as the city attorney had stated, to approve it, to review it, and then bring it back for your review afterwards. So what is it we will, <clears throat> so it will come to us only once for, for uh, as an FYI to us, since we will not approve it anymore? I mean, I agree completely with the process, actually. I just I don't understand if we will see it again, these bills or not. So what you'll, what you'll now, what will now happen is you'll approve a budget every year, and so you'll have an amount in the budget, and then you will also receive reports based on this ordinance. I think we put quarterly in quarterly. there. Quarterly. Uh, you'll receive reports on what Todd is paying, just so that you know. And for the year 2021, we'll still see bills, or this is the very last one that we approved? The only one you ever approved was the one three, four weeks oh, ago, okay. and that because it was discovered that it wasn't coming to you, and so it came to you, and there wasn't time at that point okay. to actually write this ordinance. So in the meantime, we were writing that ordinance and getting it ready so that you could Thank approve you that so much. today. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have any other questions or comments? If none, looking for a recommendation that the council approves. I move to approve. Second. Okay, we have the motion and the second. Seeing no further conversation, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All aye. opposed? Uh, chair votes aye. The ayes have it. Moving on to 3.4, which is resolution number 34 of 2122, uh, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a supply agreement, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, hometown trolley for the purchase of a new trolley and authorizing a budget adjustment and appropriation in the 2021 budget regarding the purchase of the trolley. Who would like this one? I, I guess I can jump in, um, Derek, unless you Derek? want to. It doesn't matter. I'll let you go. It doesn't matter, but he's up front. Yes, <laughs> Derek, yeah. Well, I did attend this meeting, so I guess I should maybe. Say something. Yeah, yeah say something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so uh, the request for a new trolley, it was prompted because our two current existing uh, trolleys which we use to provide uh, Route 40, which is known as our summer uh, tourist trolley route, um, are exhausted. Uh, they are in the garage and um, not leaving the garage. So uh, we've been forced to use a regular fixed route bus uh, in, the, uh, in the preliminary. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't have that same effect as a nostalgic trolley. So... <laughs> Um, so we were seeking the approval to use uh, transit fund dollars to purchase a brand new trolley uh, from Hometown Trolley, which is lo uh, located locally in Crandon, Wisconsin. Derek, could you could you give the committee a little history, for, uh, briefly about the prior the, the existing trolleys and how we purchased them, used, and all of that? Sure, I absolutely could. Uh, probably around uh, 2015, I believe um, we started. Uh, communicating with the Business Improvement District downtown about a, a venture in uh, basically creating a connectivity between South Pier, Riverfront, downtown, and the marina. And um, obviously you probably know there's a river that runs through all of that, and uh, putting a bridge over was not a economical decision. So uh, what we actually decided was to uh, put together a, a seasonal trolley route. Um, we originally started with a uh, transit bus that was wrapped to promote uh, tourism in Sheboygan, and then we were able to purchase a few used ones uh, from another transit system. Um, and we have ran those trolleys, I believe now, it was three years in a row. Um, we did not operate last year, but we had much success uh, in, in uh, individuals using the trolleys. Um, especially on 4th of July, uh, the last few years. So we, we know the importance of it. A lot of communities are actually putting trolley services uh, into place, in particular their downtowns as part of a revitalization and uh, uh, connectivity uh, to some of their premier entertainment areas and things. So um, we, have, we have really built this partnership with the Business Improvement District uh, over the years and hope to continue offering it uh, through the purchase of this trolley. Alder Felby. Uh, thank you. 
Um, Derek, I've ridden the trolley the few prior years um, with my great nephews and nieces, and it's fun because we can get off down at D-Land and let them play on the playground for a while, hop back on it, um, go to Fountain Park and have lunch, you know, in that area. Um, I, I highly recommend purchasing the, the, the new trolley. And if I'm reading this right, it's actually going to come out of your reserve budget. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come out of the city bu budget. No, that's correct. Perfect. Thank you. It's actually going to come with a new bell, too. So just to let you know, we can cruise down the street dinging bells. So. And then just to let the committee know that Derek did look at used ones. Um, but unfortunately, the, the, the ones that were available were not ADA compliant. So originally, we, we were looking at um, purchasing, you know, used ones again, like we did the first time, but they're just not available. So this was available as a model um, trolley, and um, it was negotiated to the price it's at. I would just like to comment that my husband, a.k.a. Grandpa, took our 11-and-a-half-year-old twin daughters to twin granddaughters to ride the trolley today, and they came home very disappointed. So I will tell them that we're going to have a trolley with a bell. Well, you have some control over that. Oh, we did. <laughs> today, right here, right now, and I would, <laughs> I would trolley appreciate your support. Thank you. Well done. I promise that's the only pun I'm going to throw out there. <laughs> ding, ding. We're open for more. Ding, ding. Tree? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony, go ahead. Just one quick question for me, and then I'll throw it to you. Um, so these lasted three years of use the first time, but we bought used. How long do we anticipate a new trolley lasting? Uh, well, the current ones have, uh, I think, one's at 200,000 miles, the other one's at 175,000. So uh, they're models uh, from 1999. So if we... Uh, we do the math, um, it'll last a very long time. And, and for note, I just also want to say we've used the trolleys in the past uh, for uh, the, uh, any tours, uh, development tours by the, the, by the mayor or uh, the city administrator. We've used them um, uh, for Making Spirits Bright, which we've run, uh, runs in December and things. So we bring them out for you know special occasions and things like that to add to the excitement as well. So we would plan to continue doing that as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Elder Corral. Thank you. Um, will the, the older trolley, are the old trolleys uh, fixable or we will not, we will just dismiss them? We currently have an issue on both of them where we can't figure out to, how to close the back door. Um, so, you know, I. We, we thought about doing the San Francisco thing and just let people jump on and off, but we deem that unsafe. So, um, but I believe we're gonna sell them as is. Uh, so we'll either go through the process of selling them as is or, um, or recycle them if we don't get any bids on them. But uh, we'll, we'll try to sell them as is first um, because they're really not technically much of a uh, safety issue. The integrity is still there. It's just a matter of somebody that wants to invest some money in fixing the doors or figuring how to, how to fix the doors. I was just wondering, we, previously we were using both of them, mm -hmm. or one was active and the other one was a backup? Yeah, one was active, one was a backup. It should also be noted that um, we have some concerns uh, regarding uh, ongoing maintenance with them as, as far as electrical and things like that. So again, um, we're, we'll sell them as is, but there are other concerns as well. That's really prompting us to purchase a new one. And so do you plan, are you looking into perhaps buying a backup as well? Or one would be enough for uh, Sheboygan's needs so far? I'm hoping one's going to be enough, especially because it's brand new. So I, I think this will be good. It should last us a while. We have, we have several months to do maintenance on them if need be over the winter. So it should be good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? For anybody who might be viewing that's interested, will these be street legal when we sell them? I'm truly impressed by the amount of questions, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I was just thinking it was going to be like, yeah, we'll get a new one, they're cool, but thanks for the questions, I appreciate it. Oh, 
we have to keep you busy when you come all the way to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, in that case, we are looking for a motion to uh, recommend the council approves. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, and seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. Aye, Sabbath. Thank you. Thank you. Last up, we have item 3.5, which is resolution number 3521-22, a resolution authorizing a budget adjust adjustment and appropriation in the 2021 budget for the Tyler Technologies Development Munis Chart of Accounts Redesign. Hello, um, I'm just here to quick talk about the Munis chart of account redesign. So uh, the city has been with Tyler Technologies Munis since 2009 and it's um, the financial software where all of our uh, reporting and accounting, all of that is done out of there. So we are talking about redesigning the chart of accounts or the general ledger where the accounting is done. Uh, I'll say that since I started, I've noticed um, how difficult the chart of accounts is currently um, for all departments to use, not just finance. I know every department will probably speak to that, but also uh, previously uh, different consultants and even our auditors have stressed that, a that the chart of accounts is really a concern because there are um, difficulties implementing consistent accounting principles within it. So we have, uh, gotten a quote from Tyler Technologies and Todd has appro approved it um, for $40,000 in order to do a chart of account redesign. What that um, entails is a lot of coding and computer language that I don't understand, but it takes all of the new accounts or all of the old accounts and walks them to brand new accounts where all the history will also travel with those uh, accounts. So. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting actually today, and so I met with Munis to determine the steps moving forward, and I will be working with the departments also to find out what their needs are from the accounting side. So I know mine um, from the financial side, but I know there are grants and other programs that other departments have needs too, so we'll be working with them. The first test that we can do will be in October, so I have about 13,600 accounts that we have to map from old to new, so that's why it's going to be quite a tedious process. But we do have quite a few goals. Um, we're gonna consolidate and simplify the chart of accounts, making it easier for everyone to understand, even if they have no financial background. Um, we're going to work on matching the state of Wisconsin uniform chart of accounts. So the state of Wisconsin actually provides a resource to municipalities to have some consistency between municipalities and even um, for reporting uh, to the state each year, what we have to do if we follow their guidance, it's much easier to report on. So we're gonna be working on that. And then we also will um, just gain a lot of efficiencies. I've got a few listed here, the budget, payroll, the project letter, ledgers, and then reporting are all things that will see significant reductions in time that staffs use using searching for an account. I'll say I still have, um, trouble finding certain things in our system. And I like to call myself pretty efficient on those things. So this will definitely help everybody. Um, lastly, I just wanted to show uh, the numbers are kind of small here, but we have present state and future state. And these are my estimates of the accounts. Um, I probably am a bit conservative saying 3000 is, is a bit high probably for how many accounts we need, but I wanted to just point out two things. The organizations, currently we're at 1,024, and I think we need 90. So we'll be getting rid of about 90% of them. And you'll see the total accounts, like I said, are 13,669, but our open accounts are 6,400. So we have about 7,000 accounts out there that aren't even being utilized anymore, but just muddy the waters. So. Um, we'll get down the total accounts to at least, I'd say maximum of 3,000 and they'll match the open accounts. So we won't have all these inactive accounts that are just uh, bogging down our system. 
So with that, does the committee have any questions? Okay. Yes. Um, I am recalling when you mentioned grants, I am recalling that the development department just got some new software for grants. Did, is, is that accurate? No. 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 I, I think you might be thinking of the loan program. I am. Yep, so yeah. that will actually, uh, Jessica has been working, Deputy Director um, okay. of Finance, actually helped implement that with development, and that is going to be, be mirroring MUNIS. So um, it is a separate um, software, but it does work with MUNIS. So it, it will fold into the big picture? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm just curious, will you have uh, the workforce, I mean, the, the res time resources to work with Munis on that? Because I assume, I, I've been going through this type of uh, updates for different types of systems, require a lot of work, right? Will you have, or you will need help, additional help? I am confident that the finance staff that we have will be able to get it done. Thank you. If there's nothing else, I'll just say this seems like a Herculean effort, but most certainly worth it. Thank you. Glad to see that coming before us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll open it up for one last call for questions or comments. Otherwise, we are looking for a motion to recommend approval. I move to recommend approval. Second. second. All right, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Seeing no further comments, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Nice. Our next meeting will be on August 9th. And with that, we have exhausted our agenda, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Thank so you. moved. Uh, we have a motion by Elder Flicky Paneski. Second. And a second by Elder Perella. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. We are. Adjourned. Probably good to turn that off.